these religious practices that we're going to be looking at in this episode, however meritous they may be, especially for the followers and believers of them, have been frowned upon by others. Here are 10 religious practices that have been viewed as weird and frowned upon. Hey guys, welcome back to FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton and I just want to say right off the top that it's not necessarily that these religious practices are weird but they just have been seen as weird and frowned upon by a lot of people. Starting off with number 10, we have the Scientology E-meter. So an E-meter is an electrical device of the Church of Scientology and it's used as an aid by Dianetics and Scientology counselors in some forms of auditing, which is the use of the techniques of Dianetics and Scientology to someone else or to yourself to deal with spiritual matters. And the e-meter sessions are conducted by church employees known as auditors and the individuals hold a pair of cans connected to the meter while the auditor asks them a series of questions and makes a note of their answers as well as what the e-meter does in response. Now, going back to the year 1971, there was a ruling of the United States District Court that stated this, and I quote, the e-meter has no proven usefulness in diagnosis, treatment, or prevention of any disease, nor is it medically or scientifically capable of improving any bodily function. But hey, maybe there is something more to it that non-Scientologists just don't know about yet. Either way, it's definitely seen as something that is a weird religious practice. From there, we move on to number nine. We have the Mormon temple garments. In some denominations of the Church of Latter-day Saints, the temple garments is a set of sacred undergarments worn by adult followers who have taken part in a ritual ceremony known as the washing and anointing ordinance. According to general accepted Mormon doctrine, and by the way, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and the Mormon Church, they are used synonymously. So just don't want to confuse anybody. Okay, so back to what I was saying, right? The general accepted Mormon doctrine is that the marks in the garments are sacred symbols. According to early Mormon leaders, a link was made with the square and compass, which are the symbols, of course, found in Freemasonry to which Joseph Smith, who was the founder of Mormonism, had been initiated in. This one has caused a lot of controversy. At number eight, we have the niqab. A niqab is a veil which covers the face and it's worn by Muslim women as part of the hijab. The niqab is viewed differently by various schools of Islamic thought and some see it as obligatory while others see it as only, well, recommended and others say no, it's actually forbidden. The majority of scholars believe that the hijab is required, but only a few see the niqab as being required. Although this is not the common perception among the general population. Another religious practice that has been seen as weird and frowned upon is exorcisms. This is a ritual of casting out demons from a person or place. This ritual is mostly associated with the Roman Catholic Church as well as the Eastern Orthodox churches. Now exorcisms according to the canon of the church can only be done by an ordained priest or someone higher than a priest like a bishop for example. The Catholic Encyclopedia in 1908 says, superstition ought not to be confounded with religion, however much their history may be interwoven, nor magic, however white it may be, with a legitimate religious right. So based off of this, careful examination is done to determine whether or not an exorcism should be conducted on a person. Number six brings us shamanism. Shamanism refers to a wide range of beliefs and practices of communicating with the spirit world. There are many variations in shamanism and those who practice shamanism claim that they have the ability to diagnose and cure humans and some claim to be able to even inflict suffering and pain on other humans. Shamans have been associated with the ability to control the weather as well as divination and interpreting different dreams that they hear from people as well as they've been associated with doing what's known as astral projection when you pretty much jump out of your body and are able to fly around among other things but yeah it's definitely one that's seen as weird and frowned upon halfway to number five is the dowry now this is more a cultural practice rather than a religious one but it's still associated with certain religions the dowry practice most popularly exists across india 
And as consumerism and wealth increases in India, the dowry demands have grown. In rural areas, for example, families often sell their land holdings and in poor urban areas, sometimes they sell their houses. While it gives a financial boost to a woman and her family when they're starting off their marriage, it at the same time also puts the man and his family at a great disadvantage, especially if it's abused and it's been happening quite often the abuse of the dowry system. So you can see why a lot of people look at it as weird and frown on it. Degambaras comes up next. Now this is one of the two main branches of Jainism. Senior Degambar monks wear no clothes at all and they do not consider themselves to be naked. They are wearing the environment, according to them. Daigambaras, they believe that this practice represents a refusal to give in to the body's demands for comfort and private property. Only extreme Daigambaras, though, give up their clothes, those that choose to live in isolation and all of that. They only have two possessions, a peacock feather broom and a water gourd. Number three brings us the Jewish Kaparit. Kaparit is a traditional Jewish religious ritual that takes place around the time of the high holidays. Now it is performed by holding a live chicken by the shoulders and moving around one's head three times. And this is to symbolically transfer one's sins to the chicken, okay? So the chicken is then slaughtered and donated to the poor to be cooked and eaten. The ritual begins with the reading of the book of Psalms, chapter 107, verses 17 to 20, and then the book of Job, chapter 33, verses 23 to 24 from the Bible. In response to the mistreatment of chickens that have actually occurred because of this ritual, well, animal rights organizations, they have begun to protest public observances of Kaparit. Baptism of the dead comes in at number two. This is a religious practice of baptizing a living person on behalf of an individual who has already passed away. The living person is acting as the deceased person's proxy. Now, it's been practiced since 1840 in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or the Mormon Church, where it's also called temple baptism because it's performed only in dedicated temples. In the practice, the person who has passed away must be the same gender as the proxy and it's based on the belief that baptism is required to enter the kingdom of God. Now, the weird religious practice that has been frowned upon by many people at number one is no blood transfusions. And this is a fundamental doctrine of the Jehovah's Witness. They teach that the Bible prohibits consumption, storage, and transfusion of blood, including in cases of emergency. Now, although this is accepted by the majority of Jehovah's Witnesses, some actually do not fully back this doctrine and they opt in for blood transfusions, especially if it's a life or death situation. In the year 1964, Jehovah's Witnesses were prohibited from obtaining transfusions for pets, from using fertilizer containing blood, and were also even encouraged to write to dog food manufacturers just to verify if their products didn't have any blood in them. And then later that year, Jehovah's Witness doctors and nurses, they were instructed to withhold any blood transfusions from fellow Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, when it came to administering transfusions to non-Jehovah's Witness members, well, they stated that such a decision is, quote, left to the Christian doctor's own conscience. And just like that, we made it to the end of another episode. This was a look at 10 of the weirdest religious practices. Yeah, very interesting stuff there, but let me know down below in the comment section. What did you think of any of these? Or did you find them to be weird or just unique? Maybe you follow some of these practices. Wherever you fall along that spectrum, let me know down below in the comment section. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video, you found it entertaining. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe if this is your first time here to the channel. That way you'll be notified when new videos are posted. Until next time guys, stay awesome, stay educated, and I'll see you soon.